<laughs> About the time that we had cloud cover that looked like it was going to rain, bingo! Slight breeze comes up, wind shifts, phew, clouds are disappearing. <laughs> I don't know. It's California. Have you ever thought about this? Is it okay to let someone be right? I mean, really. Isn't there a time where if it's not such a big issue that you let a person be right until they learn that they're wrong? Sometimes wisdom is the ability to let people learn as they go through the experiences of learning it themselves as opposed to telling them they're wrong. Because you see, if you constantly tell someone they're wrong and you don't reaffirm that they're right about something, they get the wrong idea about this learning process, about knowing God or about understanding who he is. They begin to think that, oh, it's all about being perfect. Well, sort of is, but not really, because you see, you're never going to be perfect and you're never going to be always right. God might make you wrong in order to make you right because he wants you to trust him for understanding and not trust yourself for wisdom because he can see the circumstances that a person is in as well as their attitude of their heart and the realization of what they need in order to bring them to the confirmation of his will to accomplish his purpose in their life which could be something you never thought of. I know it sounds like that's, you know, like situational ethics, but it's really not. It's called interpersonal relationship, which means that God is the one in charge, that we seek his will and learn to do what he says and tells us to do. And we are judged accordingly by his will for us. Because there is foundation. I mean, we have the scriptures, we have the the rock bottom truth and fact of how God deals with humanity. And frankly, I think just about every circumstance in life and every nuance of life was covered in the scriptures. <laughs> and there's some real characters in there. So you might want to think about that at times that I don't think I saw anybody that was recorded in scripture as being perfect but God used them anyways. But I did see a lot of mercy being extended, and a lot of grace, and a lot of love, and a lot of kindness, and a lot of long-suffering, and a lot of tenderness. Now, sometimes people read things and they say, well, you know, I only see the God of wrath and the God of judgment. And I say, well, okay, but if you kind of think about how long did he talk to them? How long did he deal with them? How much extended time did he give them? Like, kind of like this, you know. If God came to you today and said, I want you to do this. And you went, okay, I will. And then, ten years later, he came back and said, did you do it? And you say, oh, I forgot, but I'll do it. And he came back ten years later and you say, okay, did you do it? And, yeah, I will. And you came back ten years later, you know, and then so on and so on. Till about a hundred and some odd years go by and... God keeps coming back and saying, did you do it? Well, you know, if God decided at the end of that certain amount of time of extended grace that he wanted to wipe them out, <laughs> seems like he gave them lots of opportunity. So, sometimes, don't try to be right with somebody. Go ahead and let them be wrong so that you can be right and just watch them and wait. Eventually, you'll be able to encourage them or to comfort them. In starting your day, encourage, don't criticize. Therefore, encourage, admonish, exhort one another, and edify, strengthen, and build up one another. From 1 Thessalonians 5.11 We can improve our relationship with others by leaps and bounds if we become encouragers instead of critics. It is the greatest person who does the right thing. Christ's righteousness dwells in you to help you do what is right. You are great in God's eyes when you choose to do right and bless others. No matter how rough your day is today, 
Speak words that uplift and encourage those around you. Encourage others if you notice them doing a good job, not just those who work with you, but people wherever you go, such as store clerks or auto mechanics and waiters. Say something like, I appreciate the extra effort you're making to do your job well. Well, to do your job. <laughs> Whatever. You can change your life and someone else's by choosing to speak positive words, but you can encourage without being an idiot. You know what I mean? It's like, there's a time and a place that I say, yes, we encourage and we choose those opportunities to give silence, you know, to places where it's not necessary to really tell someone, oh, that's wrong or that's this or that. You know, and you kind of yield to the Holy Spirit to know when that occurs because, no offense, you don't encourage idiocy. You know what I mean? If someone's doing something stupid, you don't tell them they're doing a good job. <laughs> you just go, okay, and go your way. But if it's just something that's not really that bad or not really, you, you don't need to say anything, then don't. Just encourage them in their way as they're learning it their way. And then walk away. And they'll think of you as a blessing today as opposed to being a curse because you always have that opportunity to be one or the other. You can either be a vessel of honor or a vessel of wrath. You can be a blessing or a curse. The choice really is up to you as you yield your members unto Jesus and to Christ to allow him to accomplish his purpose in you so that he can do and love the world that he said he does through you so you could feel that way too as you participate with him in doing that. It's tough, I know, because frankly, I'm like you, you know, I'd just as soon tell someone they're an idiot than tell them that they're a blessing, especially if they are an idiot. <laughs> and believe me, when it comes to idiocy, all I gotta do is look in the mirror, because I know what one looks like. <laughs> <laughs>